that I think there are lots of ways to try to figure out how to get an, an improvement to the situation. In the interview with Fox Television, Mr. Hamdoun was asked if Iraq still has any territorial aspirations in Kuwait. He said Iraq no longer views Kuwait as its 19th province and would respect the frontier drawn after the 1991 Gulf War. But Ambassador Hamdoun also said Iraq maintains its non-recognition policy toward the no-fly zones in southern and northern Iraq. U.S. Ambassador Madeleine Albright responded to these statements with skepticism, saying the international community should still treat President Saddam Hussein as a threat to the entire region. John Pittman, VOA News, Washington. Lebanon has sent hundreds of soldiers to join its forces already facing Israeli positions in southern Lebanon. The move follows a larger-scale Syrian redeployment over the past several weeks. About 12,000 Syrian troops in Lebanon have moved within striking distance of a key Israeli position on the Golan Heights. Israel's defense minister says he does not believe war is imminent, but he has warned Syria, which maintains 35,000 troops in Lebanon, that Israel can meet any challenge. Greek Prime Minister Kostas Simitas has won his bid to lead the Socialist Party in a new four-year mandate, defeating a strong opposition bid in Sunday's parliamentary elections. His chief opponent, New Democracy leader Mirtalis Evert, conceded defeat after it became evident that the Panhellenic Socialist Movement lead could not be reversed. Prime Minister Simitas says he wants to confront economic and foreign policy problems. Mr. Evert focused his campaign on the problems with Turkey. In Pakistan, the killing Friday of Murtaso Bhutto, the Prime Minister's brother, remains the hot topic of conversation. Feelings are running very high in a section of Karachi known for its decades of loyalty to the Bhutto family and to Pakistan's People Party. VOA correspondent Douglas Bakshin visited the area for a sampling of opinion. <laughs> is a sprawling slum. Its alleys are strewn with garbage, an occasional dead rat, and sometimes even human waste. In conversations, some people say they do not know who is behind Murtaza Bhutto's killing, others blame the police, and some even blame Asif Sardari, the Prime Minister's husband. Authorities say Murtaza was killed Friday night when police tried to stop his motorcade. Authorities say Murtaza's bodyguards opened fire and police shot back. Seven of Murtaza's supporters were killed, and two policemen were wounded. A probe is underway. <laughs> Aside from the debate about Murtaza's death, residents of Liari complain that the People's Party has been corrupted. When asked why Liari has not been cleaned up, they say party legislators and workers are corrupt and want money for everything. Residents complain about unemployment, crime, and drug abuse, yet they remain loyal to the party and hope for better times. Douglas Faction, VOA News, Project. Zulu leader Bothalese says his Inca party will not demand new constitutional talks, but does want to meet informally with the ruling African National Congress to discuss the Constitution of South Africa. A party decision to rejoin formal constitutional talks would have dashed hopes for a new constitution by the beginning of the year. A high-level Sudanese official has criticized a death sentence passed by an Ethiopian court last week on three Egyptians for trying to kill President Hosni Mubarak. An independent Khartoum newspaper quotes the chairman of Sudan's Parliamentary Foreign Affairs Committee as saying the trial was unfair and that the death penalty means evidence of Sudan's innocence will be buried with the perpetrators. Meanwhile, Egyptian officials expressed satisfaction with the trial. Four Irish Americans who helped broker the IRA's 1994 ceasefire in Northern Ireland in an attempt to find out what went wrong in the peace process. This is the Voice of America. The Pentagon, the headquarters of the U.S. Department of Defense, is the largest office building in the world. It's also one of the Washington, D.C. area's biggest tourist attractions. Every weekday, about 500 visitors take free Pentagon tours. Visitors walk last about an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, no more liquor stores? What have we been talking about? Yeah, no more liquor stores. Besides, you ain't a giggle.